During the live show this morning, this is Saturday, I suggested that I might not have a video ready for Sunday. But I did also mention that I was going to be heading down to Gretchen Bee Ranch, which is a bee supply store down in Seguin, Texas. And Mr. Ronald in the chat of the live show suggested that I show the trip to Gretchen Bee Ranch. So that's what we're doing. This is it, this is the bee ranch around the back side of this building, which is where all the stuff, you know, his bee equipment and stuff is. He has several hives set up. He uses those for education. People come out and learn about the hives. As I'm walking around the shop looking at all the really cool stuff, they got suits and boxes and frames and tools, all kinds of cool stuff. I bumped into Mr. Mark, the uh, owner here at Gretchen Bee Ranch, and he's gonna give us a little demonstration on how to split a hive. And here is Mr. Mark of Gretchen Bee Ranch, Mark Gretchen. He's been doing beekeeping for a very long time. How long is that, Mark? Um, a number of years. Let's just, I don't want to reveal how old I am, so <laughs> I'll just leave it as a few years. A number of years. And you've grown into this space where you're providing a lot of information and equipment to people who also do beekeeping locally. So you said that you could do a small demonstration on um, how to split a hive. Yeah, I sure can. We love to split hives. We love to divide colonies. Uh, dividing a colony helps you replace uh, bees you may have lost. You can also divide before you lose bees and then have some backup colonies for when that might occur. Uh, we really think it gives you a lot of control over your, uh, your apiary and it's just a fun and not too difficult a thing to do. So nice. what we do first of all is evaluate a colony to see if it's big enough to divide. This is obviously not an actual colony, but we'll kind of simulate the steps I go through. The first thing I'm looking for before dividing, I'm looking for at least six frames of brood, uh, and preferably a lot of that is cat brood. Uh, but when you make your divide, you want brood uh, in different stages of development. So the first thing we do, obviously it's easier to have six frames of brood when you have a colony that's two boxes deep, two brood boxes deep. You have more brood to work with. It's still a little early right now to divide, so let your bees grow for now, and you don't want to divide anyway because queens aren't available, uh, available yet. Queens are usually available starting in April, so you're looking at dividing uh, in April. You want to divide as early as you can, uh, typically because uh, an early divide can build up and be strong enough to make honey the first year. Uh, so April is a great month to divide. So we just start looking through frames, we'll pull frames out, and we'll count frames with brood, 
And so there's one, there's two, and if I have between, let's say I have four frames up here, and I have five frames of brood down here, that's nine frames, so that meets our threshold criteria for a minimum of six. And then at that point, I'll just start making my divide. I usually start with an outer frame that will have food, it will have pollen and honey in it, and I'll just set that in my box. And as I'm doing this, I'm looking for my queen. Um, usually I leave my queen with the existing hive or the parent hive, but that's just an arbitrary decision. You can put the queen in either location. Okay, so we've taken a frame out, and it's a frame of food, and we're gonna end up taking a total of five frames out of here and uh, to establish our divide. Again, that's a somewhat arbitrary number. There are some beekeepers that may start a, a divide out of two frames of brood. Uh, I like to use three and two frames of food. It just helps them get established more quickly. So my second frame, I'm gonna look for a good frame of brood. So my brood nest is usually in the middle of the colony. So my next frame is a frame of brood. I'm gonna put that in there. And then usually, again, the brood nest is all together. I'm just gonna take my other frames of brood out of the brood nest and let's say I have another frame here that's brewed. I'm just gonna uh, skip over that one and skip over that one and get to my other frames of food, which are typically on the other side of the box. And so I'll take out another frame of food and that will be my fifth and final frame uh, in my uh, nook box. So I've got two frames of food on either side. The food frames, if one of them is predominantly honey, make sure the second frame of food is more pollen than honey, because uh, they need both. And then my middle frames are the, are the bees. Now, hopefully as I did that, I found where the queen was, and uh, if I find her on one of these frames, I'll just pick her up gently uh, by her wings right behind the thorax and place her right back in her hive, and she'll crawl right back down into the hive. And I leave her with the parent colony if you're not able to find the queen, it's not a big deal. Uh, just check back in uh, a few days, four or five days, and the colony that doesn't have the queen will start building queen cells, and that's the colony that you need to put the new queen into. Again, I prefer to leave the old queen with the existing colony and put the new queen in with, uh, with the divide. So I will do that. Uh, within a, a few days uh, of creating the divided colony. And so just in case, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Mark, uh -huh. just in case, um, if, if you're not sure where the queen is, you'll give it a few days right. to make sure you know where she is right. before you start introducing new queens. The hive that doesn't have the queen will start building queen cells to produce their own queen. You don't want them to produce your own, their own queen in South Texas because if you do, she will fly out uh, when she's mature and mate with uh, drones, Africanized drones, most likely, and then your colony will become aggressive. So you want to find which hive is queenless, get a new queen, and put into that colony. The last thing that we do uh, is close up the divide, and then we will move it. Uh, we strongly recommend, if you possibly can, uh, move your divided colony two or three miles away from where you created it because these bees are oriented to this location and if you leave them nearby most of your field bees especially will make their way back to the existing hive and it will weaken your divide and you don't want to do that so we strongly recommend moving it a distance away and then you need to backfill your parent colony uh, leave your brood nest intact uh, uh, so if it's two frames, leave them together and then fill in with frames. Uh, it's best if you can fill in with frames of drawn out comb. If you don't have that, you fill in with frames with foundation and then cover it and you're done. So in the middle of that, I kind of lost battery on my big cameras and we switched cameras. So just to make sure we didn't miss anything important, let me see if I can recap. In the hive that we're, that we're taking, frames from, so that our established hive. 
When we get into the hive, there's going to be food sources, brood nest, which is baby bees, and then food, ses food sources again on the Correct. other side. Correct. So we're going to take uh, a couple frames, uh, at least one frame of honey or pollen, maybe if it has both, uh, two or three frames of brood, frames of brood mm -hmm. and then again another frame or two of food source and transfer into the nuke box. And as you are looking at those frames, especially the brood frames, you want to try to find your queen and again, we leave that queen with the parent hive, the older hive. Um, and uh, if you don't find the queen, it's okay, because you'll determine which hive has the queen later. So Mark, I apologize for the camera interruption there, but you rolled with it, and I appreciate no that. No problem. Uh, Mark is a really good beekeeper, teaches a lot of people, so I appreciate you taking this time with me this morning. Sure. Sure. And sharing that with my audience, because they're asking for beekeeping episodes. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it's been too cold for me and mm -hmm, bees. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go out there. Right. Uh, but three, my three hives that are, uh, they appear to be doing well. Mm -hmm. On warm days, there's lots of bees yes. coming and going. So yes. that's a good sign. Yes. I've looked inside on the warmest days and it looks like there's plenty of bees. So mm -hmm. I hope we're in good shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This spring, we're going to be using this method that uh, Mr. Mark just described. And um, dividing the colonies, hoping to get our uh, Daddy Curbs apiary back up to six hives. Plus, we, we're, we're looking to experiment with uh, top bars. Okay. So. And just to, uh, just to recap uh, or to uh, mention, we are doing a free workshop yes. at Gretchen B. Ranch on March 30th, Saturday, 9 o'clock in the morning. We start promptly at 9. It'll last an hour. But we will go into some hives, weather permitting, in our teaching apiary and we will be evaluating those colonies as potential colonies to divide. So we'll go through them and we'll say, can we divide this colony or not? And if not, why not? And then go through the steps on how to do it, just like we did here. Thank, so. thank you for plugging that. If you are local, uh, it would be a really good day to show up because then this demonstration, this dry demonstration with no bees and nothing really to look at, will become more real as he shows uh, a live hive with uh, going through and mm -hmm. assessing to mm -hmm. see if it's even worth dividing and then going through the steps of making right. that divide. Right. So Mr. Bart, thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoyed it. I appreciate yeah. that. And we talked for a long time in there because Mark and Tin here are beautiful people and I love hanging out with them. But wouldn't you know it right in the middle of the demonstration that Mark, I, I asked him, I said, Mark, can you just show us a little bit? He pulled those hives together and he was right in the middle of that demonstration and my battery died on the big camera. So we're gonna finish up this video on my cell phone. Luke's ready to go home. He said, hey, let's go. We're gonna get out of here. So we are leaving. I thank you so much for being here on the Daddy Kirk's Farm channel, hanging out with me and just being a part of this journey and this story. It is truly a pleasure. I believe everyone has a story and every story matters. Thank you so much for being a part of my story today and allowing me to be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.